I want to begin by showing you three images. Can you tell what they have in common? Are they models? Are they confused? No, they're bald. You might see a deformed outcast, ashamed at the loss of his hair. But friends, I'm here to tell you that these men, these bald men, well, they're people too. As with so much in our society, the roots of anti-bald sentiment are in sex. In the 8th century, Western Christian monks began employing a practice known as tonsure, removing hair from the scalp in order to show devotion to God. However, these monks were also celibate, and this created an immediate semiotic relationship. No hair means no sex. Humans have a biological imperative to reproduce. In fact, the output of testosterone in men dramatically slows down once they father a child. So no hair equals no sex equals a biological failure. In the 20th century, rock stars filled the gossip pages with tales of their constant sexual exploits. This was of course matched by the manes which they sported. Their hairstyles sent a message to the world that read, Our hair is explicitly tied to our virility. Conversely, the punk rockers of the early 1980s shaved their heads as a reaction to the hair bands that dominated the airwaves. This was accompanied by Ian MacKay's famous song Straight Edge, which in addition to his rejection of the use of alcohol and drugs, included a rejection of gratuitous sex. These new hairstyles read as, Our lack of hair is explicitly tied to our rejection of sex. Further, the hatred of bald men and their sexless existence is upheld by media in all forms. In Lord of the Rings, Smeagol is a delightful hobbit with a thick head of hair. But when he begins to make the transformation into Gollum, what is the first thing that changes? His hair begins to thin. And of course, centuries later as he leads Frodo and Sam to Mount Doom, a few wisps of his hair still remain, a constant reminder of the life that could have been. In this deleted scene from The Two Towers, we are offered a glimpse of Frodo undergoing the same transformation that Smeagol experienced. The primary difference in his appearance? His hair is thinning. We are meant to see Gollum as an undesirable character, precisely because of his lack of hair. And this is all part of a larger movement by the hair community to portray all bald men as villains. Darth Vader? Bald. Voldemort? Bald. Pinhead? Bald. Freddy Krueger? Bald. Dr. Evil? Mola Rom? Elmer Fudd? Bald. 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 Meanwhile, sitcoms like Gilmore Girls feature women who are horrified at the idea of being with a bald man. In the 180 episodes of Seinfeld, George Costanza dates 47 women only one of whom presents a long-term relationship. He inadvertently kills her later on. The joke with George always being that a short, stocky, bald man could never satisfy anyone's sexual needs, let alone father a child. Which leads us to a society that produces articles such as this one. Our son says his hair loss has ruined his life. Notice the caption beneath the picture. Most of them manage their baldness in a way that allows them to keep their self-worth intact. An implicit understanding is shared by both the writer and reader that there is no self-worth for a bald man to keep. But maybe it doesn't have to be so. We live in a society that's hoodwinked us all into thinking that bald is something to be ashamed of. What I'm proposing isn't a sit-in, but a bald-in. If you've ever been wronged because of your lack of hair, just imagine that one person walks into a hair salon and sings a bar of the Bald is Beautiful choral anthem. They'll think they're pretty sick. But if two people did it with the right harmony, they'd think they're crazy. But imagine if three or four or 50 people walked into a salon or a toupee shop and sang Bald is Beautiful. The truth.